All right, what's up, guys? So today we're just gonna do a really simple Q and A. I put on the Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram already, feel free to follow me there at Ski Mask Duets. You can DM me. I check my DMs every day, and uh, I'll try to get back to you when I have the time. And uh, if you want to ask me a question for a future Q and A, go ahead and follow me. So let's get right into it. First question is favorite cutting meal. So my favorite one at the moment is the egg white salad sandwich that I make. Uh, it's two sandwiches with a low cal calorie bread just egg whites, uh, low calorie mayonnaise. The whole thing is like 430 calories and it, it's like 50 protein. Like it's really fire. Honestly, I haven't gotten tired of it. I've been doing it for almost two months. It's really good. Motivation or discipline. So both, this is why I say both. So motivation will get you off your butt so you can start right away. And that's what's important because it's kind of hard to, to begin to take the first steps, right? When you don't have any sort of motivation that gets you off the couch. But after a few weeks of doing it, you build discipline. And as the most motivation fades away, as the months go on, you have the discipline built in and then you don't quit. So you need both best way to lose weight. So obviously, um, the answer I'm going to give is calorie deficit. That's how you lose weight based on the laws of thermodynamics. You cannot break those. Um, so you have to eat less calories than your body is burning, and then it will grab energy that it needs from your fat stores. That's how it works. So calorie deficit is the best way to lose weight. Next question, what can a kid do to get fit or lift in the gym with no consequences? Um, sorry if I misunderstand. I don't really know what you mean by consequences. Um, I, maybe you're, are you saying you're not allowed to go to the gym or maybe your parents won't allow you or something like that? But what I would say, the best thing for a kid to do is body weight. You can't really go wrong with body weight stuff. Like if you can do pull-ups and push-ups and you're doing squats and lunges, like you can build a really strong foundation. People underestimate this so much. But calisthenics, especially just straight body weight calisthenics, you don't have to do muscle ups, okay? You don't have to do, you know, clapping, pull ups, stuff like that. Even if you can't do dips, it's fine. Start with the basic knee push ups, lunges, stuff like that. Eventually, you get stronger, and by the time you get in the gym, you you have like leverage over everyone else because you're not starting from the ground. You have that body weight strength built up. So I would say, get active, move around, play a sport, and do body weight resistance training. That's the best bet. Next question. Even if I have a really fast metabolism, can I gain fat to gain muscle? You know what I mean? So I think what you're trying to say is you're naturally really skinny and no matter what you eat, like it's hard for you to put on weight. So you're saying if you overeat to gain fat, will you gain muscle? I think what you can do in specific situations like these, um, I've known a lot of hard gainers in my life, like people who were really skinny, they couldn't gain weight. And Believe it or not, when they just eat way more, they're almost force feeding, but they still end up not putting on fat and they really just build muscle. So you might be able to maintain the same level of body fat and get bigger, which is really the best thing ever. Like, I, I wish I could do that. Like that, those are pretty fire genetics. So you should just eat as much as you can and don't eat high volume foods. Don't waste your time on salads, broccoli, stuff like that. If you can't gain weight, you need dense foods that are filled with calories. So I'm talking about like pasta, obviously chicken for sure for the protein but uh like noodles really anything you can get your hands on that that would be considered quote unquote unhealthy i mean you don't have to get to the point where you're eating pizza every day but i do know someone who's a hard gainer that does get a pizza almost every other day he's not getting fatter he's literally just putting on muscle so try it out did you do any other workouts than the ones you listed in your ski mask challenge pile yes i do i always change it up in the gym because um as of right now, I'm not really focusing on gaining strength or gaining size anymore, any of that stuff. I'm really just focusing on lowering my body fat to get as shredded as I possibly can, as much as I can mentally take. So I do do other exercises in the gym. I'll switch them up. For example, instead of a barbell overhead press, I'll do dumbbells, or maybe I won't do overhead press one day. I'll just do side raises for shoulders instead. I think it's good to change it up consistently. Unless your goal is to build mass and gain strength, you should stick to the same core exercises that you do and try to progressively get stronger in those. So to answer your question, yes, I do do other workouts. When did you make the decision to start working out and why? Well, I actually have been working out for a few years in the past before I started this challenge, but I had always kind of been on and off. Like I would have a really good consistent streak and then life would happen and I would fall off. The reason I decided this time around again is because last July I was going through a lot of stuff and then I had just been eating raisin canes and stuff like that, gaining fat, not really caring. And uh, my mental health was really low. And you guys should, if you really want to make gains in the gym, mental health should come first because if you're feeling good, you're going to perform really well as well. Take advantage of your mental health. Take care of that stuff. So yeah, I was in a pretty bad place and um, I was like, you know what? I need to hold myself accountable and what better way to do it than have other people hold me accountable as well. So if I show my body every day, 
I feel like I might feel embarrassed if I come on one day and I'm gaining weight or if I'm not posting every day, you know, like I wanted to have that pressure so it would force me to commit. And that's what ended up happening. What motivated you to start losing weight? And well, back to what I just previously said, really, it was like I looked in the mirror and I didn't like my physique at all. I was like, man, why have I gotten to this point? How have I let myself slip so much? And this is not the person I want to become. We all have a person in our mind. Basically, we have a Tyler Durden, if you've seen Fight Club, of who we want to be, the ideal version of ourself. And for whatever reason, we just haven't achieved there. We're too scared to be that person. I looked in the mirror and I was like, I'm just tired of not being the person I want to be. I want to be shredded and I want to be confident and I want to feel good about myself. You know, and so I was like, that's it. No more excuses. I'm going to just start. That's the best way to do it is instead of putting it off for a day until now when i feel better i'll do it no when you feel bad when you feel like you shouldn't do it when you don't feel like doing it that's the best time to start because that will train you mentally have you ever done any weight training yes actually i think weight training is the most important way to build muscle calisthenics you can go really far don't get me wrong body weight stuff definitely can build you a great foundation but if you really want to get jacked like the people you see on instagram those type of people they're all lifting weights you know 99 percent of them um, and I would say lift, lifting weights is the best way to transform your body. Is doing four sets starting off with 16 and going down by two is good about medium weights? I'm assuming you mean four sets, like 16 reps and 14, then 12, then 10. I think that's a pretty fire rep range. Yeah, it's a good idea because you're in like the prime hypertrophy range. Like three to five reps is how people get really strong without building that much muscle. And uh, they just get way stronger. Usually a lot of powerlifters do that. But if you're passing 10 reps, I think 10 to 15 is the prime, the optimal hypertrophy range. So that's good. You should keep doing that. How do you cut? So this is what you do. I made a video on how to count calories. The one right before this, go watch that so you can figure out your maintenance calorie intake. When you have your maintenance calorie intake, subtract four to 500 from it and start tracking that many calories. That should put you in a deficit and you'll be able to start cutting. And also start walking more. If you drive somewhere, park far away so you walk more. Like it sounds ridiculous, but really the steps add up. You know, if you eat, if you ate your meal at home, go outside for a five minute walk right after. It'll help with your digestion. It'll increase your activity levels throughout the day as well. And overall increase your total calorie expenditure, which will make it easier to put you in a deficit. So one, subtract calories from your maintenance. Two, move more. How do I not be skinny fat? Okay. So a lot of people find themselves in this situation where you're skinny fat. So this is what you want to do. You can do this thing called main gaining, which technically speaking, you're building muscle and losing fat at the same time, right? Theoretically. So what you do is you eat your maintenance calories. Let's say they're 2,600. That's your maintenance to maintain your weight, but you want to lift weights at the same time. So your muscle to fat ratio will increase. You'll have more muscle and you'll have less fat based on that ratio so it'll look like you're getting leaner at the same time that you're building muscle and the scale this is the crazy part the scale might not move either because your body fat will really slowly decrease but you're also building muscle at the same time so it's a really good long-term thing to do i'd say give it like six to 12 months doing that that's because over that period of time you're going to see ins insane changes if the scale doesn't move don't worry keep going with it focus on getting stronger getting more PRs in the gym, like not one rep maxes, but like 12 rep maxes. Like you're increasing your weight regularly every few weeks and eat at maintenance, get really good at tracking calories. That's how you get out of the skinny fat bubble. What would you say is your favorite part about working out? Whew, man, definitely the, the mental release. Like, okay, so I'm personally a person that likes to work out alone. Um, I used to like go with my buddies and stuff, but we always just goof around and stuff like that. It's a good time, but I really love to just have my headphones on going hard in the gym and thinking about nothing else in life except the exercise I'm doing. And it's like really freeing and it kind of sets me up for the day. And uh, I just feel really good doing that. What do you do if you want to work out at home and you don't have gym equipment? Okay, once again, body weight exercise will be your best friend. And there's so many progressions you can make on this. Like it's not like in two weeks, you're going to maximize how good you are at body weight. Like you can get to a point where Okay, you can do 20 push-ups. work on being able to do 50 in a set now, you know? If you're doing lunges pretty easily, okay, start doing pause lunges, you know? Start doing jump squats, start doing like harder stuff. Let's say you're just killing it. You can do pull-ups and push-ups easily, do a handstand against the wall and start training handstand push-ups. Body weight is insane and there's so many ways you can progress at it and build a great physique. Do not underestimate body weight training. How often do you check the weight on the scale, if at all? I know people say not to, but it's tempting. I literally check it every morning because since I'm cutting, um, the reason is, is I want to make sure 
that the number makes sense every day since I, I take my daily or my weekly average. So after seven days, I add up all my morning weights divided by seven. If my weekly average is decreasing, I know I'm progressing, right? That's how I, I'm learning because some days you wake up a pound heavier and then two pounds less and then two pounds more, right? Sodium and water retention, stuff like that. So every morning, empty stomach without eating or drinking anything after using the bathroom, that's my weight, right? It's usually around 8 a.m. Step on the scale, completely empty. And that's how I get the most accurate way. And so yeah, once a day, every morning, don't be the person that weighs themselves after every meal and it's messing with you mentally. And you're like, oh, I gained four pounds after I ate that rice. Like that's the weight of the food in your body, bro. Like it's not, you're not gaining fat. So just once in the morning, don't check it the rest of the day. What motivates you to keep on working out? Man, honestly, not to sound really cheesy and cliche, but now it's you guys. Cause now I have so many insane DMs. Like you guys are DMing me your your progress. You're saying that, oh, because of you, I'm, I'm two months into my weight loss journey. You guys, so a lot of you guys send me your before and after pictures and it's so insane. And I know I have to keep doing my daily check-ins every day on this transformation to show you guys, I'm still here. I'm putting in work. It's not even for me anymore. It's about you guys. Cause honestly I have, in my opinion, the best follower base. Like I didn't know I would get this amount of people who become so motivated and inspired and they actually take action, right? I probably, I thought that I would just have people watching me transform, but I didn't think you guys would, you know, take along in the part. Obviously I wanted that to happen, but to see it actually happen and see the DMs and see you guys changing your lives too, getting in the gym, getting motivated, it's insane. And that's the reason that I'm still motivated because of all of you. Just give me a kiss. I love you so much, bro. I love you too, bro. Give me another kiss. Give me another kiss. Damn keyboard. Any tips on bulking, bro? Yes. So you want to prioritize compound exercises, how you're going to build muscle. So that is the pull up or the lat pull down, the overhead press, the back row, bench or chest press, some kind of compound chest movement, right? Even push-ups, you don't have equipment, squats or leg press and lunges. Those are like the main compound exercises that utilize several muscles in your body. So you're going to stimulate them all at once. You want to try to get stronger at those. And I'm not saying do a one rep max or three rep max, five rep PR every month. No, you want to increase like do 10 to 12 reps per set. And let's say, oh, you did a uh, hundred pounds on shoulder press, like 50 pound dumbbells in each hand one week, right? For 10 reps. Let's say two weeks later, you got 55 pound dumbbells for 10 reps this time. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you progressively overload and you build the muscle, you build the strength over time without injury. Don't get yourself injured. And the way you do that is by not lifting freaking max effort every single time, maxing out. I literally, I hate people who max out all the time because maybe you feel good right now, but one day your lower back and your knees are going to smack you across the face and say, why, why did you put us through that? And then you're going to be left with nothing. So yeah, for bulking, that's for the lifting part. For calories, I would say it's best to lean bulk, right? So you could dirty bulk if you want, especially if you're early on in your career. I might get hate for this, but I'm going to be honest. I'm a fan of dirty bulking. I think everyone should do it at least once in their life because obviously it's not healthy. I'm not saying for health reasons. It's fun. Okay, I'm not going to lie. It's fun. It's so easy. You don't have to track anything. Go out and eat with your friends. Dude, if you want to go get a freaking chicken strip meal, go do it, bro. Like, you could dirty bulk your way for like six, seven, eight months and get really strong. You're definitely going to get fat. Who cares? Enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with being fat if you're happy with how you look. So, or if it's, if you know, it's a temporary thing, right? So that's my opinion. But what, what I would recommend is most optimal. If you have patience is do a 250 to 300 calorie surplus. If your maintenance is 2,500, set it to 27 or 2,800 and do the progressive overload training in the gym. And just eat at that amount because it'll allow you to slowly build muscle, let's say two pounds of lean muscle per month um, as a natural, and you'll be putting on minimal amounts of fat, right? So ideally, that's how you want to do that. What was the hardest step in your weight loss journey for you? Whew, man, probably I would say the cravings because my family is always making desserts and pastries and pizzas and stuff like that. That gets hard. I'm not going to lie. I literally had a fat bowl of cereal last night. I caved in and I'll be transparent about it because I'm human too. I want you guys to know it happens. You will cheat. And what do you do after? Do not mentally wreck yourself. I'm like, all right, it happened. It's a minor setback. So, okay. We pick up where we left off and we keep the ball rolling. We just keep moving. So that's the hardest part is 
probably avoiding things when it's not the right day. I have refeed days where I will eat something nice, a few slices of pizza, maybe a, some ice cream, like I'll fit it in on the refeed day. But the days I'm not supposed to, and my mom's making vanilla pudding brownies or stuff like that, like, whew, I'm building that mental toughness for sure. What do I do if I'm unmotivated? Cause you know, life be shit. Well, what I would say is consider why do you wanna, you know, lose weight? Why do you wanna get fit? Cause obviously you want to, if you're asking the question, there's something in here, in here, there's something inside you that wants to change. Now ask yourself, why? Why do you wanna do that? So think of the end goal. For me, I, I envisioned my own body like chiseled, looking like a Greek God and just looking like how I, how I always wanted to be, how I knew I could be. Think of the end goal. Think of how people will treat you. What's everyone going to say? I mean, it could honestly, even if it means taking a materialistic motivation, just do it. Whatever will get you motivated, get you excited. Because like I said earlier, you kind of need that initial motivation to get you up and doing it. And then the discipline will come along. So I would say, think of why you want to do it. What's your end goal? And what do you hope to gain out of it? And just really think about it every day. It'll push you. How do you get buff without using creatine or any supplements? Well, same thing. You want to get a calorie surplus and you want to progressively overload in the gym. So it's a combination of eating a little bit more and getting a little bit stronger as the months go on. Are triceps better than biceps? Yes, absolutely. In my opinion, tricep is two thirds of the arm. If you want huge arms, grow your triceps. They'll grow from the back. Obviously, your biceps will grow at the same point, but it's a smaller muscle and it won't make as huge of an impact on your arm size, especially when not flexed, right? Like if you want your arms to be big at rest, triceps, bro, dips and close grip bench. Bro, shout out to Mushi28. This guy asked like 10 questions. I just realized I didn't even know. That's funny. You're asking all these. And I apologize if I can't get to everyone's questions because there was like over 100. So I'm just going to get the most asked ones, the most beneficial ones, in my opinion. When cutting, is it true if you, you don't lose muscle if you do it right? Um, I think yes, depending on the length. If you do it a really small deficit and you don't cut for longer than like 16 weeks, you probably won't lose muscle. That's why I recommend in my ebook for fat loss to do it in phases. You cut for 12 to 16 weeks, you maintain for two months. And then you get to the next lean state of body fat, you know, three to four months, and then you maintain that for two months. That's the optimal way. Cause if you go from 40% body fat, crash diet all the way down to 10, you're definitely losing lean mass in the process, especially if your um your protein is not high enough and your deficit is too big. So if you do it slow enough, you could get away with either not losing any or barely, barely losing. You just minimize the amount you lose. What supplements do you take? Okay, cool. This is a good one. So I only, I use whey protein when I don't have tuna or chicken or egg white, stuff like that. If I really need the extra boost, I don't like using protein powders because they don't make me as full as actual food, but that helps get additional protein. Um, I tried taking creatine once. I almost got kidney stones because I was doing the loading phase and then I wasn't drinking enough water and I just woke up in the middle of the night and my kidneys were like squeezed like lemons and I was in so much pain. I stopped taking it. It's not for me. Um, recently, because I'm trying to get extremely shredded, I ordered these from Gorilla Mind. I'm going to show you guys right now. I just copped this stack from Gorilla Mind. Raul sign. Camp PM. And this thing. Uh, the androgen receptor upregulator. Now, I started taking those to see what's all the hype about Gorilla Mind. I think they're sick. I think I wouldn't recommend them to people just starting out. Do not take it, especially if you're like 16, because this is a huge stimulant. If you're young, like if you're under 18, I would not bother using this because it's probably really bad for you to take at a young age, right? Same with energy drinks, pre-workout, stuff like that. Wait till you have some experience in the gym. But the reason I'm taking them is because apparently it's supposed to help you sweat more when you do your cardio and blunt your appetite a little so you don't feel as hungry and so in turn you're sweating more you're burning more calories increased calorie expenditure better for fat loss so i'm testing them out and i used code beef shout out to patty um and we're gonna see if i can really get to like single digit body fat using these hopefully i mean fingers crossed if i diet and eat the right amount of protein will i lose fat and keep the muscles i have right now yes if your protein's high enough your deficit is not too big and you're accurately tracking your calories and working out Especially if you're a beginner in the gym, you never worked out, you might even be able to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. This is really common for people who are new in the gym. Experienced lifters can't really do it. I'm pretty sure I'm past that point as well. I can't really do that at the same time. 
But yes, if you have all those factors, there's a good chance you'll be able to do it. What can I do to maintain my physique instead of working out as much? So maintenance is a lot easier than people think. You don't need to be in the gym five, six, seven times a week. If you do two to three really intense training sessions, and they could be full body training sessions, honestly, where you're lifting intensely, you know, you're, you're doing a pretty decent amount of weight. You're actually trying to get stronger each time and you're eating at maintenance calories. You can maintain the same amount of muscle mass that you have. It's harder to get it than it is to maintain it. So you can just reduce the amount of times you're in the gym per week and just go hard on those workouts. It'll be sufficient enough. You might even be able to still make gains with three sessions a week. I know Kino body does that. And he's been making gains as a natural for a long time. Do you jump rope? I no longer jump rope for cardio. I really just be walking all the time. Like literally I walk on an incline at the gym and then I get my steps in during the day. Um, I don't really do any hit or moderate intensity training anymore. The jump rope was when I first started. Um, I did. I'm not going to lie. I got bored of it, but I found walking is sufficient enough to keep the ball rolling for me. I have trouble being consistent with workout routines and school and tests advice. Yes, because I was once in your position now. But OK, this is the crazy part. There was a point where when I was in school still, I was going to the gym only twice a week. And I was still making gains because I was studying for tests and I was like, screw the gym. I need to, you know, worry about my future. And believe it or not, in those two sessions, I was still getting stronger and I was still putting on size. Like, I think it's because you're giving your body a chance to fully recover so that you can have a really intense workout where you're making extreme gains. You're able to do more volume, like you're getting stronger. So I think in my opinion, if you can't fit at least one to two days in the gym, just worry about school for now. The gym will always be there. We don't want to blow it for your future while you're in school. So prioritize the important things in life. That's my advice. How long should you rest in between sets? I like to rest about 90 seconds. I feel like less than that, I'm still kind of tired from the last set. And more than that, I start to cool down. You know, if you start to rest three to five minutes between sets, you lose your pump. You start to cool down. And I like to keep the tension and keep the, uh, the stress going, keep the blood flowing, stuff like that. Workout routine for arms. Sure, bro. So cannot go wrong with dumbbell curls. So that's for biceps. Um, preach your curls as well, because you want to try to target both heads of the biceps. There's two heads, hence the name bicep. So preach your curls, regular dumbbell curls. Um, and I stay in the 10 to 15 rep range on those. I don't really do much of biceps because as you get leaner and you hit back well enough, like your biceps get stimulated as well and your biceps start to show more. Mainly I focus on triceps, triceps, dips for sure, close grip bench and rope pull downs. Those are the main things. And then sometimes in between sets, I'll do close grip pushups. So I would target triceps majority of the time and biceps still hit them, but you're really going to see a lot of growth on your arms from your triceps. How do I cut as a 14 year old, six foot, 65 kg, just trying to get lean. So if you're 65 kg at six foot, I would assume you're already pretty lean, but you might be in that skinny fat category. And since you're 14, I would say like you're about to go through puberty. You're, it's probably not good to restrict your calories. I would say you don't have to get into counting calories right now. My advice would be start working out in the gym. If you want to get lean, start prioritizing protein for your meals, protein, vegetables, and fruits, right? Don't eat so much bread and so much pasta and things like that. Try to stay away from that. Keep going to the gym and build muscle and really just focus on eating chicken, eggs, stuff like that, uh, steak for sure and get a decent amount of veggies in because veggies will fill you up high volume and they're pretty low in calories. So in turn, you'll probably be able to drop fat and build muscle and um, be able to transform your body. Why does my family resent me? Well, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. You know, if your family resents you, sometimes you just have to be the light at the end of the tunnel for them. If they doubt you, they don't think you're successful, they think you're a failure, whatever, just don't hold it against them because you can have that hatred in your heart. And I used to be there. And it'll fuel you and you can definitely start your villain arc. But man, honestly, I would just say don't let it get to you because even though it's the people closest to you and they're resenting you, you know, just work on yourself, improve yourself, and they'll start to see that you're a hardworking individual. You're really trying to make your life better for yourself. And then in turn, they will be forced to respect you. How can I make my veins visible for me and others to see? Lose body fat. Lose body fat or gain muscle. If you train forearms, you might be able to push the veins up through the skin as the muscle grows. But really the best way, in my opinion, I, my veins started showing like crazy. The more weight I lost, I started getting leaner and leaner and leaner and lean beef pattier and leaner. And eventually the veins started showing up on my forearms first. Then I got the bicep vein and I was like, that's it. I'm hooked. I like being lean. So lose body fat and you can do it. For getting lean besides eating right, does just lifting help? 
At the end of the day, this is how I put it. The gym is for building muscle. The kitchen is for seeing them. Yep, that's what it is. So you can go to the gym and build muscle. If you're eating at maintenance, yes, you might be able to get leaner because your muscle to fat ratio will change. But really at the end of the day, you could build all the muscle you want, but if just the fat's covering it, it's gonna be a lot harder to see definition and see striations and see the cuts. So does everyone have veins like that and they just have to lose weight to make them show? So veins are genetic, the way they show up. I have a lot of friends that have that vein that runs from the chest into the bicep. I don't have that, I'm really sad. I really wish I could have it because it looks sick. It runs through the front delt. They have chest veins, some of them. They have veins in their quads. I don't have that. Veins are genetic. To see what your genetic vein structure will look like, you do have to get leaner, yes. And then they'll start showing up. You might be lucky. You might have freaking veins in your back, veins in your hamstrings. You might be one of those blessed people that their forearms are just vascular all the time. So get leaner and see. Do you calorie cycle? And if so, how many high calorie days per week? Yes. So the way I'm testing it right now is because I started plateauing from just a straight deficit and one refeed day. And I, I remember learning that as you get leaner, you're going to have to have more refeed days. So my current structure is three low days, a high day, two low days, and a medium day. So since the last one is only two low days before I do a medium day, so the end of the week calorie intake is still enough to put me in a deficit, but I'm flipping it and I have those high days to look forward to. So my low days are 1600, high is 24, and the medium is 2000. So I'm 16, 16, 16, 2400, 16, 16, 2000. And um, that's the structure I've been using right now. And Believe it or not, it's working, which you would think, how you're adding food, you're eating more on those days, you should be gaining weight. No, if you track it correctly on those high and medium days, it's really not as much food as you think. You know, it's enough for an extra meal or extra few pieces of stuff in the meal, but it actually helps your body like keep the fat process going so you don't plateau. What's your favorite snack to eat while cutting? I really like Greek yogurt, honestly, because it's pretty fire, uh, especially the, the non fat one. There's a vanilla non fat one I use. And so it's mainly just protein. And then I crush an apple cinnamon rice cake in it and sprinkle it in like nacho libre. And dude, that's a fire snack. I'll tell you that right now. Thanks for sharing your XP with us. It helped me lose a lot. I lost 15 pounds in a month. See, this is what I'm talking about. I love these messages because 15 pounds in a month is a lot, actually. That's really insane progress. You know, I would try to avoid losing more than that per month because that's pretty fast and it might not be sustainable. But congratulations to you, dude. That's insane. 15 pounds in a month, you're killing it. Do not stop, keep the ball rolling. Don't ever kill momentum. When you have momentum building, don't kill it. Just keep going. How do you cope with cravings for junk food? So this is actually an insane concept. I learned about something called neuroplasticity. You can literally train your mind to get stronger. And the way you do that is first you have to suffer and say no to the junk food craving when you know you're not supposed to have it like early on. And these first few no's are gonna be so hard. You're going to see people eating brownies in front of you and cupcakes and you're going to be like, wow, this is insane. This is so hard. So I would say out of sight, out of mind, if it's not in front of you, it's easier to avoid. But as you say no more, your mind literally becomes stronger. It sounds crazy, but the more you say no, the easier it becomes to say no. And eventually people are eating pizza in front of you. You're like, ah, can't have that today. Maybe on my refeed day. It's just like, it's not hard for you anymore. So you train it by suffering the first few parts. You say no. And eventually you don't even want it. Like sometimes I see my family eating stuff and I'm like, ah, eh, that's cool. I'm gonna go make eggs. Like it doesn't really affect you. So you got to suffer first and then you get better at it. How important are rest days? Very freaking important, man. I know it could be hard to get a rest day if you're a gym rat like me and you like to be in there seven days a week, but do yourself a favor, take one or two rest days randomly in a row. And when you come back on that third day, oh, just see how good your workout is going to feel. You're going to be fully recovered. Nothing will be sore, ready to kill it. So rest days are very important for recovery. Do you use pre-workout? Yes, when I need it. I've been using C4 pre-workout because it has beta alanine in it. And I like that like itchy feeling because I don't know, it just makes me feel intense. But I try not to use it all the time. I'm more of a black coffee kind of guy. How do you check how many calories you're consuming? Watch my last video. I show you how to track use my fitness pal or any other calorie counting app you can find. And you just got to get used to weighing your food at home or scanning the packages, understanding the nutrition label and putting it into the app, put everything into the app so you can see it. It's a visual breakdown of all your meals, carbs, fats, protein, sodium, potassium, vitamin A through Z calories. You need to get used to it. You got to suck at it first for the first couple of weeks and then eventually you get better at it. How do you see how many calories you're consuming? Use the app and scan what you're eating. Would you ever try calisthenics? Absolutely, I actually love calisthenics. Pull-ups and dips and push-ups and lunges are like my core 
workouts to this day. I, I think you can never go wrong. If you just have a park and you want to just be a calisthenics athlete, you could still build a sick physique. Don't sleep on it. Chest workouts for beginners. So if you have access to a gym, I would say dumbbell bench press. I don't like the barbell because it feels weird with the dumbbell. If you have like a shoulder imbalance or anything like where you're just not symmetric because most humans are unilateral. We're not really, nobody's really perfectly symmetric. I like the dumbbell chest press a lot better. Do that. Definitely throw some push-ups in there, dips for sure. Um, and then try to get some cables and do some cable flies. Those will help you a lot. And definitely focus on incline for the chest press. Incline chest pressing is really good. If you don't have access to that, then I would say you're gonna have to become a god at push-up variations. So there's a lot of push-up variations you can do to make it harder on yourself. Do those and um, also work up to doing dips. If you can do 20 to 30 dips in a set, your chest is for sure gonna be big by that point. You're definitely gonna get some chest growth. Will the home workout give me very good results? Yes, I think so. When I put that workout together, even for me to this day, it's tough to finish the five rounds. Like it's a really good workout. You're definitely gonna have high calorie expenditure and be building muscle in several parts of your body if you're a beginner. Like if you've never worked out before, this is honestly fire. It's a really good thing to progress in and it'll give you a really strong basis. You're gonna see some muscle growth. You're gonna see fat loss. You're gonna sweat. You're gonna have fun. Is it good to have a cheat meal every two weeks? Yeah, absolutely. If it's just one cheat meal, yes. You, you, if you're only doing one cheat meal every two weeks, you could even go pretty ham on that one meal and it, I don't think it'll set you back on your progress. Um, so yeah, I, I usually would do one cheat meal on the seventh day for like my second or third or the last meal of the day, it would be the cheat meal. Um, but now I do it like every fourth day because I'm leaner and I have to have that, that for my body type, I can't be in a straight deficit. My body plateaus after the third day. But yeah, once every two weeks, that's great if you can do that. Best exercise for forearms. So you wanna go to the bathroom and never. <laughs> okay, so really you're gonna wanna do for wrist curls where you have the barbell and you're, you're curling them and then you wanna do it backwards too. And also, hold heavy weight literally just hold heavy weight let it hang down like hold the weight by your side and hold it as long as you can or even just hanging from a pull-up bar as long as you can hold on for it's gonna really force your forearms to get a sick pump and grow and your grip strength will improve too what's the hardest and easiest thing about getting shredded the hardest obviously is um not going over my calorie intake because we're humans like the the body will tell you when you're hungry and sometimes you just have to fight it when you have that goal in mind which i have a pretty big goal in mind and I'm not there yet. So I got to keep pushing through it. That's part of life. It's not easy. Easiest is, I don't know why people talk so much crap on eating the same thing every day. I find that makes it so much easier when I just know what my meals are going to be and they're just consistent and the, the, the calories are accurately being tracked too. Like it creates routine and we as human beings, we need routine in our life. That's the easiest. How do I get a mad dumpy? Bro, squats for sure squats is like the best glute building exercise especially if they're weighted that's what you want to go for is squats how much cardio should i be doing for it to be efficient so i would say start with 15 minutes of walking on an incline per day if you have a treadmill start there you want to start small and also aim for aim for getting 10k steps per day that's just walking around doing daily activities stuff like that uh you might not even have to do cardio if you're actually moving that much but eventually you work up to i think a really healthy amount 30 minutes of walking a day, especially if it's on an incline, that's amazing. 30 minutes of walking a day can take you far. How do I get started on making my own food to bulk? Well, I would say start simple. Don't think that you need to become a chef and make pasta, etc. Most foods you buy, they have instructions on the package. And thank God for YouTube. Bro, YouTube has been such a great resource in my life, YouTube and Google. Use the internet. We're really fortunate to be part of this generation. Honestly, the resources are in the palm of our hand. Utilize them, use YouTube and find really simple meals that you can make that are high in calories. Like if you go on YouTube and look up uh, bulking meal prep or how to make foods to bulk, like there's gonna be stuff that pops up for sure that will benefit you. Do you ever skip a leg day? Whew. No, I don't, I'm lying. I have before, <laughs> usually it's because I have chronic knee pain, I'm not gonna cap. I, I have a lot of chronic pains actually in the past from dumb stuff I did when I was younger. And um, sometimes I just don't have the energy, even if I take pre-workout, um, I'll do a, I won't skip it. Let me rephrase that. I won't completely skip leg day unless I'm working a lot or, you know, I just really tired. I need to rest, but I'll do a light leg day instead. I won't go as intense as I know I can. So that's my main downfall is eating a low amount of calories, almost starving yourself fine for losing weight. No, I wouldn't do it because if you start off really low, 
then when your body gets used to that amount, where's it going to go after? You can't drop them even lower if you're doing a thousand calories. I would never do that. That's why I say to start at like 3000, whatever your maintenance is, whatever you think it is, add a few hundred to it, whatever the calculator told you. Start high and then slowly just subtract two to 300 calories. And if your body is losing weight on 2,700 calories, do not lower it more. Play that out as far as it can go. And when you plateau, take a maintenance week up the calories back up and then this time maybe go down to 2600 2500 just walk a little more don't start off with extremely low calories you're going to get those fast results you're going to lose five pounds in a week sure but you know what's going to happen when you finally break and you can't do it anymore you will literally gain it all in three days with how much you're going to eat so don't do it to yourself the goal is long-term improvement okay don't sacrifice the future for the present okay do you ever drink do you ever drink energy drinks or eat energy bars to help you out yes i do drink energy drinks every now and then but like i said i'm more of a black coffee kind of guy how should i diet if my mom makes meals all the time we have healthy food most of the time but well yeah it's a struggle if you live in your house and you can only eat your parents cooking my recommendation is if the food's already healthy i would say either eat less times during the day or slightly reduce the amount you eat per meal that's how you can create a calorie deficit. If you're maintaining and you're just eating what your mom makes, don't eat until you're completely full. Eat 75% of that. Take like 25% of what your meal is, like a fourth of the plate. Take that out and just start eating less and watch you. You'll start seeing results. How many times a week should I work out and do I work out more often as I progress? So this depends on your schedule, right? Ideally, what you want to aim for, if you have the time, six gym sessions per week, because then you can do the typical push-pull leg split and hit every muscle group twice. You want to try to hit every muscle group twice per week. However, that's also possible with two times per week in the gym, two full body sessions. You might be in there two to three hours, but it'll be a sick workout and you have three or four recovery days in between and you do it again. Or you can do two upper and two lower days, upper body, lower body, and that's four days in the week. So the main goal, hit the, hit the muscle groups twice each per week. And that's how you're going to see gains. And um, as you progress, no, you don't have to start going more frequently unless your recovery is really that good. I would say just start increasing the weight on your workouts or increasing the volume, do more sets, do something like that to make it harder. You don't necessarily have to go more to the gym. Is there any mistakes that you've made that you'd be willing to talk about? Yes, yes. So um, I definitely fell into a trap of binging like several months ago, like because my deficit was too big and I wasn't really cutting efficiently and I was... I was more like, oh man, I just need to get shredded, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. And then eventually I'd be on such low calories and I'll have a day where I snap and then I eat a whole box of cereal and eat pancakes and I'll just wreck all the progress. And um, the way I took care of that, because a lot of people have that issue, don't feel bad about it. Like, don't feel guilty. Just identify your trigger, identify what triggers you. I found my trigger and I was able to be mindful and say, huh, if I eat this, it might, you know, force me down this road. Or if I restrict myself too much, maybe I need to change my, my dieting structure. Maybe I need to have more high days, more refeed days, or change the foods I'm eating because something is causing me to get into that binge mode. And eventually I identified that my trigger was most of the time sugar. So for me, unfortunately, I'm not really a person that can have balance with sugar. Like if I eat a small amount, then I start getting extremely hungry and I just want to eat all the freaking pastries and sweets in front of me, man. And it's a trap. So for me, it's better to just not eat them. And then the once a week, I might have something on my refeed day. But yeah, I found my trigger was sugar. So I started avoiding it. It became way easier. So yeah, the whole binging thing, it happens to a lot of people. Just don't get to a point where you binge and then you fast for two to three days to make up for it. And then you say the fourth day, I'm going to be good. I'll eat right this time. And then you binge again and you do this fasting binging whole thing like don't get to that point identify what your trigger is so you can stop yourself remember the goal is long-term progress and how do you do that you don't need to be extreme for the current day or week or several weeks you know you want to think what am i going to do that's going to benefit me over the next few months long term what is your personal opinion on being a big impact on people man it's actually really cool i'm very fortunate to be in this position and i'm really happy that I could be that because when people tell me that I inspired them this and that and stuff like that like makes me feel really good because I never thought I would be in a position to be a leader and push people to be their best I thought I'm just going to transform my body if you guys want to watch it is what it is you know follow along but I think the position I've been put in is insane and I like it and I want to expand and impact more people because the message I'm spreading is positive and I know we can all make a change if we put our minds to it and so 
that's why I want to just keep growing because I know that someone out there who wants to change their life will eventually come across my stuff and be like, you know what? This guy did it. I sure as hell can too. And that's what it's all about. A chain reaction. Even you guys out there, you guys that are making transformations that follow me, you're probably impacting other people that you don't even know either. They're seeing like, wow, John Doe lost 20 pounds the last two months. Man, that's insane. I can't, I can't believe someone I know is doing it. Like I'm going to start too. So that's what it's all about. Chain reaction. I love that I'm able to do that. Thank you guys. Are your parents jacked? No, man, I wish. Cause I have friends whose parents are jacked and their genetics are so crazy. They're just so lean and, and strong year round. And like, man, I wish I had those genetics, but whatever you play the, the cards you're dealt in life. I should have chose my parents, right? Greg Doucette. So nah, um, but I will be the jacked parent. That's for sure. My kid is going to have some crazy genetics, bro. How do you stay consistent? Yeah, well, it's all back to what I said about having a routine and having that discipline. So the motivation got me going. Discipline formed, and that's what kicks in on the days I don't feel good. And I know what my routine is. I have to eat this today, and I have to go to the gym at this time. I'm going to force myself to do it. That's how you get consistency. Consistency is usually a byproduct of having great discipline. Is there an anime character that inspires you to go to the gym? Yes, bro. Um several but i really love black clover that's like my favorite anime and, and asta man seeing him do those thousand push-ups on the top of the skull and just go ham with the body weight exercises i love that bro and i want to look like asta after the time skip so yeah definitely black clover captain yami too let's give this guy some credit he's the freaking chad of all chads captain yami is super jack bro he's over six foot boulder shoulders dark magic user come on that guy i want to look like captain yami he's jack how many times a week do you work out at the moment i'm working out like five to six times a week i just really like the gym environment that's why i don't like taking rest days i only do them because i have to not because i want to and it's better for recovery um but i really enjoy being in the gym it's uplifting the lights are really bright it's cool to see your progress you, you know see the regular people that you talk to there and uh just create like a more positive you know outlook on your day because you know, you go and, and you, it just, it raises your vibe. I like being in the gym. It helps the rest of my day be happy. What's the most effective back workout? If I had to pick one exercise, I'm not gonna lie, pull-ups. Pull-ups will make you see such insane gains and you can modify the, the way you hit it if you wanna hit your mid-back or your uh, lats. Like Lean Beef Patty has something on her Instagram where she shows how to target lats or mid-back based on your arch for when you pull up. Man, pull-ups can make you so many gains. You're, you're literally hitting so many muscles, so. I would say that's probably my favorite workout would be doing pull-ups every back day for sure. Did you bulk before the challenge? It looked like you had a lot of muscle there. So I definitely did have a little bit of muscle built, a foundation from going to the gym um, over the past few years of my life, but I never really dialed in sleep, training, and nutrition. And I kind of was just floating, you know, over what could have been my genetic potential, but I never really unlocked it because I wasn't serious. And then every time something happened in life, I would fall off. And uh, I just never dialed in all three aspects. And now I am. And it's really cool how fast the progress starts to kick in when you're sleeping enough, you're eating correctly, and you're really pushing yourself in the gym. So yeah, I did have a little bit of muscle built before this. Um, so that definitely helped. But I would never fully committed to the grind like I am now. And now I'm really starting to see the fruits of my labor and see what my genetic potential is. Do you ever feel like giving up? Oh, um, man. Sometimes I get that thought in my head and I shut that window immediately. Cause I'm like, why? If I came this far, why would I stop now? Don't kill the momentum. If the snowball is rolling, don't stop it. So I'm going to keep going as long as I can mentally take. So the days that I feel like giving up, I really shut that thought up immediately. Cause when you got something good going for yourself, don't give it to the negative thoughts. You're going to have them close that window. I've seen no progress in myself, but I lost so much. And my friends say I look different, but I don't see why. Okay, this is cool because since we see ourselves every day, sometimes it's hard to notice changes because change happens slow. Your friends don't see you every day. They see you every every week, every few weeks, right? So they're able to see the collection of the change that happened over the weeks in one moment. You're seeing it every day in the mirror and you're saying, man, why am I not having a six pack when I'm waking up? But it's it'll distort your view and you you won't be able to really see the changes. If people are telling you that you look different, you definitely have made progress. So you just have to be able to identify it on yourself. It's hard because we see ourselves every day. But if your friends are telling you, then you're on the right track. How many steps do you do a day? I try to go for the 10K amount. Usually it's around 8,000. 
but I really do shoot for that 10K steps a day mark because that's really good, especially if you want to maintain at a high amount of calories. Your maintenance could be like 3,000 if you're doing 10K steps a day and hitting the gym. Yeah, it'll be easier. You'll you'll have the freedom to eat more because your calorie expenditure is so high. So I go for that 10K. I don't always hit it though. Is weightlifting the best way to work out or is calisthenics better? Different strokes for different folks. I would say weightlifting is better. It has a slighter edge because there's more you can do and you, know, you can always add a 2.5 pound plate. You can always get stronger, stuff like that. You can progress better. But calisthenics should not be slept on. You can build, go look at some of the calisthenics athletes that are out there, especially in Russia. They have crazy bar athletes. Dude, you can get jacked from calisthenics. But I think weightlifting does have the slighter edge uh, because there's more you can do. How do I form a V taper? Last question. So to get a V taper, you want to focus on getting leaner because then you'll have a narrower waist. And also you want to maximize width of your back and how do you look wider shoulders you want to hit your delts you want to do a lot of side raises overhead press make your shoulders bigger and rounder and then do a lot of pull-ups because if you hit your lats your lats will grow wider you don't have to focus on the width of your back so much and do rows um i mean the thickness you don't have to focus so much on the thickness of your back by doing rows if you do pull-ups you'll get wider right and uh, you lose fat your waist will get smaller and then you're hitting shoulders your shoulders will cap off and then eventually you'll have that V look. So that was the last of the questions that were asked, guys. And I hope this was a useful Q&A for you. If you sat through the whole thing, I appreciate you. And I hope that you got some value out of this. So I'm going to sign out now. And this is Ski Mass Duets. Let's create the best version of ourselves to give to the world. Peace. Yeah.